Hey guys. So today I wanted to do a quick overview of a meter that I just bought. And the reason why I wanted to review it real quick was because I only paid a little over $20 for it. I think I got it on Amazon and I think it was like $24 and it had like a 10% coupon or something like that. So I ended up getting it for a little bit over 20 bucks. But it is here and it's called a Meter K, M-E-T-E-R-K, and the model is an MK05. I know there's another model. They do sell other models of it. One is an MK06. I'm not exactly sure what all the differences are between the two. But uh, what I wanted to do was do a quick comparison. Uh, it, it, it against my Fluke 87 because it's pretty accurate for a $20 meter and it's got some cool functionality for a $20 meter. And mostly what I use is um, checking voltages, AC and DC, and it uh, definitely covers that. This is a, also a, a amp meter, just for AC, so you can check the AC amps um, through there. And you can check continuity, you can check resistance, and it has a cool thing where you could actually check capacitance, which is really cool. And we're gonna do that real quick on a capacitor I have here. And who this would be useful for is, uh, you know, possibly an HVAC person or, or, you know, someone who just wants to be a little bit dangerous with HVAC. But it has, um, it, you know, really cool f uh, feature to check uh, the capacitors so a lot of times with uh, air conditioners especially on hot summer days what usually breaks on the air conditioner is the capacitor and this gives you a really cool quick way to test it for 20 bucks and it also has a, a neat feature on here that's called NCV and it's something I don't know the exact but uh, near contact voltage something like that but this allows you to look for voltage on a line uh, without probing it directly so all you have to do is just you know get your your uh, probe near uh, uh, something that has electricity and it'll tell you if that line is active or not if it has electricity in the line or not I think it goes down I can't remember down to six volts AC or something crazy like that we're just gonna test it on 120 volt outlet because uh, normally that's what you're going to be checking for possibly maybe 24 volts ac 120 ac or 240 ac uh, but what we're going to do here is compare it against my fluke and you're going to be surprised at how accurate it is um, especially on the dc side i was i was extremely surprised i think it was uh, one one hundredth of a of a um, volt difference than my fluke and again that's going to vary depending on the the voltage can't remember what I was testing at that time. I don't know if it was a 12 volt battery or what it was, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and just show you some of the features right now. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start it out on the voltage AC. And uh, what I have here is an, uh, an extension cord that I brought over from the wall. So it's got 120 volts on it. And um, what I'm gonna do first, these cables here run to my Fluke. So I'm going to connect my Fluke up first. And you're going to see my Fluke shows 123 volts AC. And then what I'm going to do now is take the probes from the meter K and we're going to hook them up as well. So we're just going to I still have it connected to my Fluke. And what we're going to do is we're just going to plug these into the meter K. And you're going to see it's got 122.28. So 122.8, and that's got 123 AC. So the AC voltage is very close to, to being on. Uh, one cool feature that I like with my Fluke is you could also read the Hertz. And what this is mostly useful is if you do a lot of um, testing of generators and whatnot, you can test a frequency. So... Fluke is really easy. You put it on there and you can see the house voltage, which is should always be 59.99 or 60. And then over here, we can test that as well. 
uh, on this meter K. Now just bear with me. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be pushing the right button here, um, but let's set it into Hertz. So you can see right there, I'm also 59.98, 59.99, it's close enough. And you know, just yet another feature that this meter K has that you see in some other meters, you know, it's got a Hertz meter built into it. So it's kind of cool. What I want to do now is show you the uh, capacitor test. So we're going to flip this switch here, down into this mode here. And then when you get inside here, you have to hit the select button. Right now, I um, should have probably disconnected it from the power first. Right now, uh, what we're going to do is when you take the two probes like this and you touch them together, um, you're gonna, this measures resistance. So you can see uh, right there, that's two ohms, that that means there's connected. And it also has a mode where you can hear sound. So if you're wanting to see if a fuse is blown or you know a, a wire is, is open or shorted, you can just touch these two together and it should make a sound when I hit them. Okay, so that's yet another feature of it. Um, and then if you hit the select button again, you're gonna get into, that's a diode feature. And there's the capacitor mode. Now, what we're gonna do here, this is a kind of a cool uh, capacitor that I bought. It's called a Turbo 200. And what's cool about this is you could set the microfarads. So if you go into a job or if you don't know what your AC capacitor is, you can buy one and this thing is able to, uh, you could add the different levels by jumping them together. So for instance, if I needed a 45, I could take the 20 and the 25, jumper them and get 45. So really, really cool. If I wanted to do something, uh, you know, if I needed a 55, I could take uh, 10 plus 20, which is 30, plus 25, which is 55. So there's a lot of flexibility in this capacitor. But what we're gonna do is we'll just test the 10, and the uh, center is common. So what we're gonna do is, uh, you can see the meter there. We're gonna set this here, and it should read somewhere around 10. Now, let's give it a shot. Okay, 9.87, which is pretty close. Now notice that took, I don't know, a few seconds. Now what we're gonna do is do it with a fluke, and here's where you're gonna see a little bit of a difference. So I'm just gonna go over to the fluke and uh, check the capacitor as well. I just have to remember where it's at on the fluke. Okay, so we gotta go here, and we gotta go into this mode, and there we go. So now the fluke, we're gonna do the same test, but watch how watch how much faster the fluke's able to, to read it. Try to not get this in the way here. Okay, so the fluke was almost instant, uh, 9.89. So you see 9.89 on the fluke, and then we'll come back over to the meter K, and we'll put it there, and it's gonna take a few seconds, 9.87. So, um, again, you know, it's just another feature of this meter that I really like. And what we'll do is just do another one. We'll do the 45. So you can see that I have these two jumpered. The, I have the 25 and the 20, which should give us 45. So we'll see what it does here. We'll put it here and here, and we'll see if we get 45. 44.73, which is almost dead on. And we'll just do that on the fluke. 44, 8. Okay. So um, now what I want to do is test the DC voltage. So I'm going to put that to DC. And we'll come over here. And we're going to change that, the voltage. And then we're going to, right now it's set to AC. So we push that select button and then it goes to DC volts. Okay. So what we have here is a um, on a loop. It's a double A rechargeable battery, so 
It should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.3, 1.2 volts, uh, depending. So we're going to go to the fluke first. And we're just going to see what the voltage is. So on the fluke, it's 1.311. Notice the um, extra digit of accuracy on the fluke. So 1.311. And then we're going to go over to the meter K. And do the same thing. Okay, 1.31, zero. Okay, so it's pretty accurate <laughs> for a $20 meter. And uh, one of the other last features I wanted to show you was that uh, NCV. Again, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's something like near contact voltage. Now I've got the two probes in my hand. Nothing connected to it. But here's that 120 volt, 20 volt line. So look at that. Again, I'm not actually probing or touching anything. I'm just running it by it. See? So it's a kind of a really cool... It basically identifies when electricity is present. So again, if this wire was just hanging there, this extension cord was hanging there, and I didn't know if it was plugged in or not, I could just run this right by it, and it tells me I have electricity. Again, um, it does AC amps. The only thing it doesn't do uh, is DC amps, which I was hoping it did DC amps. That would be almost a complete meter for me. Um, and it also does temperature. So I believe it came with temperature probes as well. So um, it'll do Celsius and Fahrenheit. Uh, one other cool thing that this has, I want to point out, that actually my, um, well, this, this fluke here just doesn't do, but my amp meter on my other fluke doesn't do a max feature. And how this is really useful is it measures inrush current. So, for instance, if I was trying to figure out how much current a motor drew on startup, all I would have to do is go to this meter here. First off, I'd get the, you know, get the common wire uh, through the clamp. And then I would just go over here and I would set that to max. And then what that would do is that would record the highest um, current that came through when the motor started. So it's a feature that my, my particular Fluke 336 doesn't even have that this has. So you could actually record inrush motor current with this. Um, again, a host of features. I think it actually has up there, it actually has a flashlight if you can see it uh, right there. So it has a little light you could shine on. So if you're you know, somewhere where there's no power and you need to uh, light it up a little bit, you don't have a flashlight, it actually has a little light on the end of it there as well. Uh, so again, I thought I'd pass this around to someone who might be, you know, maybe don't know what kind of meter to buy, or maybe they buy a cheap meter, uh, cheap meaning a meter that doesn't have many, many features or functionality that uh, someone would use. But I think the most common features, at least that I use, uh, and I've been, I've been playing around with multimeters for years and amp meters for years, is it's got an amp meter. The only thing it doesn't have is DC amps. Uh, and a lot of people don't even use, uh, would have a need for DC amps. I use it a lot because I do a lot with uh, lithium batteries and uh, battery banks, DC battery banks. So I like to know how much current uh, that's being passed. So that's where a, a DC amp meter would be good. But for the most part, this will measure um, AC current. It'll measure AC and DC voltage. It'll measure the Hertz uh, or frequency. And it has a, a, a cool feature where it'll, it'll measure resistance, it'll measure capacity, it'll measure diodes, um, and it'll also measure uh, uh, temperature. Okay, so thought I'd pass this along. Hopefully, if someone's in the market for a meter, um, you know, and you're looking for something inexpensive, this one here seems to be so far. I've had it for about a month now and haven't had one issue with it so far.